Hello. The thing on? Cool. <clears throat> Hi, last talk. You guys uh, excited? Yeah. All right. So this is planning artworks and exhibitions. This is second title, I guess. And this talk is about making analog things with digital tools. And uh, instead of working on the talk, I came up with this thing called the DigiLogger. So the quality of this talk might suffer a bit, but there's another render of it here. So about me, my name is Carlo. I'm an artist, a fine artist, I should say, because a lot of people here are 3D artists. And I used to work a lot with staged analog large format photography, made works like this, and worked on sets like this. And one day I thought to myself, Blender, <laughs> just like that. That's not really true. I actually thought to myself, I have an idea for a staged large format analog photograph where I want to use a Greek column, but a real Greek column is super heavy. Oh my god, I could use a 3D program, which I always wanted to do. Now that I have to stay at home for two years, I can finally learn a 3D program because that takes forever and I will never again have the time for it. Now, I never actually made that photograph with the column in it, but uh, I started making some digital art and I could finally get uh, get to this pile of unrealized projects here and make a few works. Now, what I loved about working with a 3D program is when you're on a set and you have to move a lot of heavy stuff. I mean, look at that light there or this tripod there or that crane. Okay, I never had a crane, but I would love a crane and I couldn't move it myself. So I love that you could just uh, move heavy lights on your own or simulate huge lights that you could never like rent because it's unimaginably expensive or you can simulate huge cameras <laughs> or huge donuts, you know, because like a large format camera, four by five is like this big. If you go eight by 10, it's this and anything else is, I don't know, a trailer, I guess. It's another shot of the donut. So this talk is my personal post-creation pipeline proposal for artists. A lot of peace. I hope I didn't spit on anyone in the first row there. And so a fine artist might think, OK, I have like my oil painting, and I learned Illustrator, or maybe InDesign to make the catalog. I learned Photoshop to make the whatever. And I have to learn Blender. And you go like this, like, mm, I don't really want to do it. But I learned it, and uh, I think so can all the other fine artists. Just get your trusty computer. And learning Blender is fun. There's no problems. You know, you never get mad at it. There's no issues at all. It's just smooth sailing <laughs> all the way. And it's fun every day, and every day, and every day. So first topic, frames. If you make two-dimensional art and you print it and you want to frame it, then, uh, well, you need a frame. So let's take this picture here. Maybe you want to light it, frame it. Let's go a bit farther. Maybe you want to use a picture of your girlfriend. And you want to play with uh, wood and frame colors, because, I don't know, getting this framed is expensive and a lot of work, and maybe you're not really sure. Like, you can hold the parts of the wood onto the thing and, like, see what that might look like or feel like, but you'll never really see the end result until you actually have it made. So you can play around with the colors, make it red, make it green. It's, you know, very trivial. And you could do this shit in Photoshop, I guess, but you can never get this, like, I mean, look at this. Wow, right? Like, to you guys, this is maybe super trivial, but it's, for me, this is like, wow. I get, like, a rebound light. That's, and this takes, you know, you guys know this, this doesn't take a lot of time at all. And it's just mm, some frame porn, just some normal maps. Wow. Look at the profiles. You can give this to your carpenter or, I don't know, frame that even, you know, because you get a nice render out of everything uh, you work on there. <clears throat> Play with the frames a bit more. You can't do that in Photoshop, or not that easily. But what you definitely cannot do is this, you know, boom. Then 
again, with the being on a photo set, you can never do like a top shot. Everyone loves top shots. It's just really, really realistic, you know? <laughs> <clears throat> And playing with these uh, frame thingies actually led me to designing a bunch of weird frames for a new series that I'm working on called Metaverse, which is a big topic now. Anyways, top shot. Mm. Another thing, sculptures. So uh, maybe I should do that once just so we have it <laughs> on the thing. OK. So imagine you're my friend Sami, and you want to make a sculpture. You're like, I don't, I don't know, like, what I want to do. How big is it gonna be? So turn the light on. Then I come in, and I'm like, well, I can, I can help you with that. <laughs> my friend Sami, you can start with yourself. You know, boom. And then uh, you get your trusty computer, digitalize him. Saw that, how he turned into a You get it? Anyways. And then you can play with it. And then you can put it on your phone or tablet and like walk around with it AR style and see, oh, will this like fit here? Or do I like it here? Or you get the point? Funny thing is like, this is so big. I actually, so this is not an actual work of art, obviously. But I did print him and he was that small. <laughs> yeah. All right. Another thing, exhibitions. This is the big, uh, was the big thing for me and where a lot of uh, fellow artists and curators asked me, like, how can I learn this program in a way that I don't have to actually learn it? So maybe this, let's get to that later. Anyways, so imagine you have the chance to exhibit in this wonderful white void, like every art fair, I guess. Um, yeah, back in the day, people used to make these crappy models. You know, like, this, what are you going to do? Like, get your glue out and glue this thing together. I've seen it. It's messy. No one wants to do it. You have these, like, small things you have to print. It's like, no. No one likes it. Why not just AR prehang? Boom. You know, get it up to the century. It's easy. Everyone can do it. And then uh, you also have the nice render of your exhibition. Yeah. It's all there. Another top shot. Well, wow. okay. The last topic: digitizing physical artworks. This is, I think, a very trivial task, also. But uh, if you just, you know, if you have an oil painting and you photograph it and you put the frame on it and you have this OBJ file, you can do anything with it. You can look at it on your website. You can give it to archives. Let's imagine it's a sculpture and you 3D scan it, and people can look at it in a really nice way on your website all over the world. Uh, it's like, I don't see any reason not to do it. You can also see what, you know, a house, a house of your pictures would look like with boxes in them. And of course, you can, you know, like, uh, let's say this whole metaverse thing is taken off, and people want their, you know, your works in their crappy little VR, Metaverse homes, I don't know. You can, just, you can just do it, you know? It's like a JPEG, but whatever. Um, examples with my works. Boom. It's in the Guggenheim. <laughs> you can also do that, you know, just fake it. You don't have to go there. It's not like they're returning my calls or anything. Oh, yeah. Hey, this is where I would actually use it. This frame exists in reality, but I'm too lazy to clean a wall and paint it and do all of that stuff and hang and photograph it. I can just, because this is being made by a robot, like this metal frame anyway, so I can just do it like this or like this and this. And it looks pretty real, I think. At least my mom asks me where this room is. <laughs> Look at this, right? Wow. All right. Can even fake your own entire gallery. Do stuff like this. Put the box in it. Put your sister and a dog in it. It's my mom's dog. 
and do stuff like this, and it's just fun. So all of this planning analog things with digital tool stuff um, has also got me, because I like to build stuff, has also got me into some other endeavors. Maybe a lot of people in Holland would appreciate the cargo bike. I designed this, and uh, it, this doesn't exist yet, but hopefully next year. Or this bonsai pod. This is real. Like, we made this, and it's at home. Anyways, the takeaway points are planning in a 3D program can be hella futuristic, like the digilogger here. It can be time and money saving. It can be a lot of fun and very frustrating. It can give you new ideas and maybe digiproof your stuff for the future. Another top shot. God damn it. And uh, yeah, this is it. Short talk. Thank you so much. If anybody wants to reach out, let's connect. <laughs>